Our seaport and airport play a critical role putting us on the global stage. They connect us to the world and keep Singapore a thriving business and trading hub. That's why we've always taken the long view and continuously improve our sea and airports. Ten years ago, I spoke about our plans for Tuas Port and Changi Terminal 5. We've been working hard at these plans. Tonight, I want to give you an update. Let me take our seaport first. It serves not just Singapore, but many countries around us. A decade ago, Asia was growing strongly, and we anticipated that PSA's business would grow with it. The existing terminals at Tanjung Paga, Brani, Keppel, and Pasir Panjang, they were working fine. But we decided, nevertheless, to consolidate all our port operations into one mega port at Tuas. This shift would progressively free up prime waterfront land from Shenton Way to Pasir Panjang for the future greater southern waterfront. The move to Tuas has already started. If you drive past the Tanjung Paga terminal on the AYE, you can see it's no longer used for container operations. It's almost empty. And that's why during the pandemic, we could put up isolation and recovery facilities for COVID patients in the container yard. Tuas Port is now up and running. The first two berths started operations last December. Ships are calling there from all over the world. Because we had planned ahead, our port was able to handle extra volumes during the pandemic. While ports in other countries experienced closures, severe congestion and long delays. But PSA, our port, remained open 24-7 throughout. And we reinforced Singapore's position as the catch-up port. Because this is where vessels can make up time for delays elsewhere. In fact, last year, Singapore handled a record high of 37.5 million TEUs of containers. We kept our position as the world's busiest transshipment hub. In the process of moving to Tuas, we modernized and upgraded our port operations. The new port is automated and digitalized. It uses AI to coordinate operations more seamlessly, including vessel traffic management and port clearance. Instead of trucks with drivers, it deploys a fleet of driverless AGVs, automated guided vehicles. These are the things here. There's no driver, it just moves around magically by itself. And this smooth transition owes much to our port workers, unions, PSA and MPA, the, Mar the Maritime and Port Authority. Management and unions worked hand in glove to retrain workers and help them adapt to new working environments. And on their part, workers picked up new skills, upgraded themselves, and became more productive. We have just completed phase one of Tuas Port, and phases two, phase three, and phase four will follow. When it's fully completed, about 20 years from now, Tuas Port will handle 65 million TEUs annually, almost double today's volumes. We will have the world's largest fully automated port, and that should make us a leading global player in the maritime space. In the same way, Changi Airport secures Singapore's position as a global aviation hub. We have ambitious plans for Changi too. Over the years, we've progressively expanded and upgraded it. I previously spoke about Terminal 4 and Jewel, and they are now done. But even before we broke ground for Terminal 4 and Jewel, we already envisaged building Terminal 5. Let me show you on a map. Here are T1 to T4, and this is T5. So T1, 2, 3, and 4. T5 is as big as all of these put together. In terms of capacity, T5 will have 50 million passengers, which is equal to T1 plus T3. 
But if you look at the way the airport is built, all the new part of the airport, T5 and all this new half, in fact, we are building one more new Changi Airport. It's huge. Next to T5, we will develop the Changi East Urban District in, down here. And this will be a new business and lifestyle destination, creating more jobs and opportunities for Singaporeans. Before the pandemic, we were about to call a tender to build T5. Due to COVID, we paused our plans for two years, but we made good use of the downtime. We reassessed the long-term prospects for air travel and improved the terminal design. We concluded that the future of aviation remains bright. Now with borders reopening, people are traveling again. Passenger traffic has already exceeded half of pre-COVID levels. In the longer term, air travel will keep growing because of a fast expanding middle class in our region. Hence, we decided to go ahead and restart the T5 project. We redesigned T5 to be more resilient, in particular to operate more safely and flexibly during a pandemic, to scale operations up and down more easily, and to isolate passengers from different flights to limit cross-infection. We've also made T5 greener and more energy efficient. And when it's completed in the mid-2030s, T5 will show the world what sort of place Singapore is. Let me give you a preview of the passenger arrival experience. From arriving onto the SkyTrain, to immigration, to baggage collection, to a beautiful Singapore welcome. And once you leave the terminal, you can go down the escalators, take the MRT straight into town. T5 will be a place that all Singaporeans can take pride in and enjoy. Our decisions to press on with Changi T5 and to our support send a strong and clear signal to the world that Singapore is emerging stronger from the pandemic and charging full steam ahead. 